Hi there guys, welcome back. This is CNSX Channel's walkthrough of Alice and Madness Returns, continuing from where we left off before. As you know, or may have come to realise by now, we are still listening to me, Cameron, also known as C-Note, um, bringing you through the latest sessions of our playthrough of Alice and Madness. Now, I've decided to take a more serious note in my actions towards describing the gameplay before I was going off a bit of a bit of a tangent, not really talking about the actual game, but more things that are in relation to the game. So, when we entered the factory, I started talking about how it was going with ideas at a time about um, social, social philosophies. Now I'm going to change that kind of tact and try and stick more to the in-game realities that are present, um, as well as. As well as make considerations towards the psychological things, and if I can, try and teach you about uh, some of the things I learned today. Like I thought, a new plan I was going to put into things is. When I watched Alice in Wonderland earlier, they mentioned words I hadn't heard of, like um, ep epigraph or something like that, or epitar, which I didn't actually um, understand what it meant at the time, so I chose to look it up. Things like that, I want to enlighten the user of, or watcher of these walkthroughs on these little things that maybe you don't know. I just thought it's it's better to do that than to just do purely walkthrough because the point of this game is not just to do an entertaining game but to supply you with an interesting imaginative um, kind of world that has its basis in reality and if possible um, use it as a way to try and teach us about things that we may not have known. I mean everything has an origin yes? So I thought, um, well, well, we'll just we'll just look at the gameplay so far, and then if I think of something that is quite interesting, we'll we'll discuss it then. So until then, let's let's let the game play out a bit more, shall we? That reminds me of um, how the process of how you make milk. No doubt, um, sorry, how you make cheese, I believe it is, or some such. Yes, um, how you get milk ready so that it can be used by the consumer. Apparently the process is after you acquire the milk from the um, cows or what have you, you then put it in a giant vat as you see there, the milk has been poured into um, a giant container. I'm not quite, I'm assuming this whole place is a giant tea factory by the way, so I'm assuming that stuff gathering at the bottom must be um, milky tea, which is by all means um, the well-known British tea kind of example is milk with um, the ordinary blend. Maybe they're making Earl Grey. But as as for um, the process how you make the milk into ones we know like semi-skim, full fat and so forth, what you do is when you pour the milk into the vat you would then have a churner kind of um, turning in the vat uh, clockwise I think um, it turns a full cycle in 30 seconds. Now, the stuff that gathers on top of the milk is the um, fatness. And um, I can't remember if it's full fat, I think they leave it there. If it's um, semi skimmed, so you no know, half fat, they remove um, the top layer of fat and leave the second layer behind. If it's um, fully skinned or whatever, then they remove all the fat from it and then process it and it, when you do that it pretty much tastes like water flavoured milk kind of thing because I'm more of a full fat person myself um, they have really adopted the um, healthier water diet because I just well the stuff tastes basically like water flavoured milk why don't you just have water you know or maybe a little bit of full fat they also I think um, 
use that use the um, top layer of that for an ice cream. I'm not quite sure. I'll have to look into it more, but I'm pretty certain um, that's how they make it. I could most certainly be wrong. So uh, yes. Just thinking that. Uh, well, that's that's it for the little talk about milk. But in coming up videos, I may start to talk about um, religious things. Maybe I'll do like um, a duo kind of talk with a friend of mine who is uh, of a different faith to me. And uh, we'll bring in some atheist views maybe and a few other religions. I mean, it is ignorance to not listen to others and just accept your own without thought. That's ignorance and stupidity really. We all have our own mind and we're entitled to voice it. But I'm mainly doing that because um, Alice's world seems to me like one that's made up again of many religions, uh, many creeds uh, in this game. It's not as obvious as say an Assassin's Creed game where you have the, I think the latest one, Revelations or whatever, had Muslims in it, it had possibly Jews, and it has whatever Altair's religion is meant to be. Not quite sure what it is. It's not atheist because he certainly believes in a god. I, I don't know who they'd be classed as. But um, I was, I'd try to enlighten you on some of the old religions as well that we may have, that majority of people would have forgotten about. Because they are called like the dead religions and stuff like that. Or the ones that are on the verge of extinction when really they shouldn't be made extinct because they are quite good religions to be a part of. But we are speaking about the uh, Alice tale right now, so um, clearly um, Alice would have had the game developers, as thinking Victorian times, would have had a major influence from the industrial area era, which, if you believe my um, family, because one of my younger siblings studied, apparently studied um, in art or some such or architecture. Um, the year that the Industrial Revolution started, whereas me being someone who studied history have my own opinions. But seemingly it is suggested that it started in 1795 when a British um, coal miner owner, factory owner, discovered that if he, if he um, used a certain system, a pulley system, so that he could get water, could be brought in from his, um, could be brought in from the surface and taken down into the coal mines for the workers to use, rather than any of the workers actually having to go outside and collect the water, that it would make them more efficient. And that's the whole point of the Industrial Revolution, is just a revolution of efficiency. How do you make things more efficient? How do you get people to do the work that is necessary and remove as much of their work that would slow them down as possible? And that's what they kind of done. But then I was looking back and um, it's, the suggestion was a lot of modern day um, corporate industries nowadays don't actually believe we've left the Industrial Revolution. Um, they think we've merely changed the type of revolution, Industrial Revolution it is. Because industry has continued to grow, it's changed from, say, in the old days, the raw resources, coal, um, oil, gas, it's now microchips, plastic, nylon, you know, more of the luxury stuff rather than the base materials needed to survive. We've become so consumer-based now that... we're in danger of essentially destroying any balance that exists in the world. I mean, most people I'm sure know that oil, um, fossil fuels like coal and stuff, there's a reason why they're called fossils, not as well as fuels. Yes, we use them, we burn them and stuff, and we turn, convert them into energy. But, as the saying goes, they are not a renewable source. They are only renewable as far as time can tell. I, I'll explain this simply. 
how it works is oil is made by trapping um, something like the remains of dead trees, um, dead bodies and animals get trapped under a large amount of sediment underneath the earth, um, underneath a lay of the earth's surface. Then over a period of millions of years that um, is decomposed and compressed with a type of gas which exists in these chambers um, and over time it, it turns the trees into oil and stuff like that. The reason why we say it's not renewable, because time-wise it's not renewable. For example, if you used up all of the oil we had right now, all of the oil we have, then if you wanted to renew it, you would have to find a large amount of graves, right, so dead bodies, that have been kept in certain conditions, so trapped underground in an airtight place, and been left like that for a few million years because so far no one knows of a quick way to create oil you know like the the black oil not like um, olive oil or we do know it is possible to turn stuff like olive oil into a um, energy source but it's not quite as potent as the black oil um, because that oil petroleum and diesel they give you a lot of energy, whereas this olive oil does not give you much. Other alternatives were found like using citric acid and stuff to produce electrical currents or um, using renewable resources, but in all of these it's not quite as effective as fossil fuels. And if you imagine the reason why the Victorian time was such a big time for the Industrial Revolution was because so few countries were actually getting revolutionised. Like um, Britain was full of the Industrial Revolution, we got to remember it was also a very, very small country. America followed suit, but not as dedicated until later on. We'll all roast in our beds, Alice, for the sake of your father's unnatural devotion to pretty popular. This horde of flambles wants only a malignant spark, and poof, our flesh and blood is smoke and ash. Now the Far East is seen to be kind of uh, following suit for the production of uh, fossil fuels in their industry and there is a general complaint by most people that they shouldn't be able to do this but then other people are complaining well we did it, we didn't actually care, we continue to produce all this oil and we no doubt have created long term problems for the planet. Why, how is it our place to say that the countries of the Far East, which for so long we held back in their development, um, should not be allowed to do what we do? Some have given the simple answer of, um, we don't want them to become as powerful as us. I think that is the simple one said by everyone. But in more honesty, it's more like, the, um, we've already learned the lessons, they should continue our work. Let's go on.